kids. Happy Humber Wednesday. Happy Hazy Wednesday. Um, this is a, a hazy IPA that I made. It's actually uh, half of a pair of hazy IPAs um, that I thought maybe I would talk a little bit about because I think the process is interesting and I think the beers came out super good. So this one is a 6.1% IPA, um, no boil, all whirlpool and dry hops, uh, fermented with Hornendal Kvik yeast from Omega. Um, I've been reading a bunch about the Kvik yeasts, um, a lot of Milk the Funk stuff, um, some other places too, but... For nerd yeast, Milk the Funk is kind of the, the place to go. So what I did is I did like a, a full-size 10-gallon mash, um, ran it all off into a kettle. I only have an 11-gallon kettle, so I filled that thing like puka style to the top and brought it up to just 200 and 208 degrees um, dumped nine ounces of citra into that wort and I just whirlpooled it just stirred it every you know couple minutes um, I didn't drop the temperature at all typically if I do an IPA or a hoppy beer um, with a normal boil I'll drop the temperature down to like 180 170 160 somewhere in there um, just so you don't lose so much of the the hop oils out out the steam um, but for this, I wanted to get some bitterness because I was really not going to have a place to put bitterness in except whatever bitterness that dry hopping adds, and that's still a, a number that's certainly up in the air. So so I did that. I whirlpooled for 30, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, and then I racked it off into two carboys and pitched uh, the Hornendal Kvik yeast. Um, the Kvik yeast is pretty crazy stuff, uh, so far, anyway. It, I think it really likes low pitch rates. It will, it will eat, like, almost no yeast will, will blow through wort like crazy. Um, I just, I did have, like, the, the normal pack from Omega, put it in a, um, in a mason jar, you know, like a, a quart mason jar, and I just... You know, after the wort had come up, I pulled some off into another jar, cooled it down, and kind of just did like a, a vitality starter or, a, or a, just a kind of a jump start. Um, and that yeast was churning like crazy within 15 minutes of of putting that um, that wort on top of it. It was crazy. So I pitched. I just split that jar. I just pitched it, you know, half and half into the two carboys. Then I thought. Well, let's just see what it does if it really is that active. So just whatever the, the residue is or was on the uh, the inside of the jar, I pitched a starter wart into that, and overnight I went from just whatever residue was left on the inside of the jar to like a solid quarter inch of of uh, yeast on the bottom of the of the carbo or the jar. Stuff is nuts. Um, I fermented it super hot, like 95 degrees, ramped it up to over 100, um, because I read that the, the hotter you run this yeast, um, the more citrus and tropical notes it throws. Um, so this half of the beer, I have dry hopped with three ounces of Azaka and three ounces of Mandarina Bavaria, and it is insanely citrus it's crazy but the citrus character you can you can tell drinking it it's not all hop driven it's definitely yeast driven so super cool yeast uh, the other half is dry hopped with four ounces of mosaic and two ounces of cryo citra which that one is so good um, this one is an interesting one um, it, it for whatever reason, which I can't really figure out, the color is a little bit different 
carboy to carboy. I don't know if that's... I don't know why. This one seems to be a little browner. Um, and the Citro Mosaic is a little more orange, which seems strange. Um, and maybe it's an oxidation thing, but I really, I really tried hard to not oxidize this beer. Um, as I was kegging it, I mean, I, I totally like did a full, full volume flush with CO2. Um, the only, I mean, the only thing I could really maybe do different is get a closed conical that I can pressure transfer with, but uh, that's, that's a big ask. So, um, I did use an auto siphon on this beer versus the other beer. I didn't, I had a spigot, so... I really think there's not much chance for oxygen ingress on, on the other one. Maybe the auto siphon is adding more than I think. So, I don't know. It's interesting. But that's my story about raw Kvik IPAs. Um, definitely will not be the last one I do. Uh, I think it's a cool style. The ha if, you, if you're looking for the, the Hayes Nation, Hayes Bra, um, I kind of believe not boiling your beer is pretty solid. Um, the yeast is big. I mean, there's, there's nothing really in here, but haze. So not like it's a yeast bomb. You don't get sediment at the bottom of your glass when you're done. So it's super cool. Um, in other brewing news, I have, uh, over there, um, actually, well, there is a Brett, uh, table beer that Jake and I are, are both making a version of uh, because we were so stoked with one of the beers we had in Portland from a place called Logs Den Farmhouse Ales uh, called Table Breda. Um, super, super good beer. We may have gotten like water bottles full of it and gotten the brewer in trouble for giving us water bottles full of his beer, but he was a super rad dude. Um, has been super helpful with the recipe, like overly helpful, <laughs> honestly. Um, so that's there, and I, I also have uh, just finishing up dry hop on the uh, triple double IPA for uh, a kind of a hop experiment sort of thing that my boy Mike Dean is is running. Um, so it's a uh, triple double in in that it's three hops, two grains, um, making a big Mike Dean style uh, IPA. So kind of cool i'm using uh, some hops i've never used before i just i bittered it with magnum and i am i'm running uh comet in comet in, in the boil like a big like a, i think i think there was a 10 minute edition of comet and then a maybe like four ounces at 10 minutes and then like a uh eight ounce whirlpool um so it's going to be big big comet and then it's got a double dry hop of cashmere which is another hop that I've had just one beer with lately that was super interesting. Um, I mean, we opened the bag of hops and smell just the raw hops. Uh, it is a Pantera concert for sure. So um, I'm interested to see the, the dankness that comes out of this beer. I think it's going to be pretty rad. So yeah, that, uh, that'll be coming. I'm going to try and keg that this weekend. I just dropped the second round of dry hops yesterday. So that'll give it like a four between a four and six day second dry hop depending on if i keg this thing friday night saturday morning sunday sometime um you know i can't be bothered to actually plan things so that's what i know the uh, i should have taken a video the traveling growler is gone i've sent it back out into the world like a like a baby bird that was probably more of a butterfly than a baby bird um but it is it is in in, in capable hands of uh, of refilling it with with uh, some quality electric haze, and then I believe it will whisk its way to the west coast um, for Zimamber Pig. So um, yeah, that's that's the update. Hopefully, there's going to be a little little uh, hey, I got the traveling growler video showing up here sometime. Maybe it's even today. I don't know. Um, but. <sighs> Yeah, do nerds. Go make yourself some haze. Save yourself some time. You don't have to boil it. You just get it hot and throw some yeast in it. It's pretty sweet. So um, try the Kvik. Uh There's a couple other strains out there that I want to get my hands on now because I'm so intrigued with this one. Um, and we'll see. I'm thinking uh, a grapefruit blonde would work well with this. 
Um, and maybe just a straight blonde fermented super hot would almost get you to like a citrus grapefruit kind of blonde uh, without any fruit, which would be interesting. So we'll try it. And then I have to, yeah, you know, empty some kegs. So anyway, that's a little video. Yeah, I do, nerds. Mm. Hashtag Hayes Nation. <laughs>